hello guys welcome and welcome back to my youtube channel in case it's your first time here it's so nice to meet you my name is precious peculiar and on this youtube channel i teach you how you can find follow and fulfill god's plan and purpose for your life and i know that is something you should be interested in because i mean why else were we created right so i want you to sit back relax get your notes get your pens and let's learn together god bless you So today i'm going to be talking about a particular scripture and the topic today is forsaking your desires forsaking your desires so i did something very similar to this video in 2022 can't remember the month sometime in 2022 and I, I i broke this down like it was demystified but today i'm just going to focus on one part one part that the spirit of god is emphasizing on especially in this season so very quickly, let's open our Bibles to Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 38. Now I'm going to put the scripture reference down for those that well, maybe they're watching this video in their leisure time and they don't have a Bible like near them right now. So I'll just put it down here. So basically, Mark chapter 8, from verse 34 to 38. Whoever wants to be my disciple, whoever wants to follow me as my disciple, this is Jesus speaking, must deny himself. And if you see the Amplified or Amplified Classic, they just put it, there's a way they put it in brackets and like they just explain it, like they put synonyms, everything, to just further make you understand what they're talking about. Deny himself. Express, no, no, that's the other part. Deny himself, that is put himself under. Deny himself. Set aside selfish interests. That's very powerful. Whoever wants to follow me as my disciple must deny himself, set aside selfish interest. And the second part is express a willingness and a desire to endure whatever may come and follow me. Deny himself, that is to set aside selfish interest, to put yourself under, to completely discard and ignore your own desires. Amen. Then to, then to express a willingness to endure whatever may come and follow me. This is Jesus speaking. Like I said before, I did a video on that sometime in 2022. So I'm going to link it above. Like all the three parts of that scripture, all the three parts of that scripture was like properly demystified. But today we're just going to be focusing on one part. And that's that part of deny yourself. As you can see, the title of this video is Forsaking Your Desires. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. In brackets, it's put as this. Ex no, sorry, not express a desire. In brackets, it's put as this, that deny yourself set aside selfish interests set aside selfish interests. Now, there are two levels to this denying yourself there's the case of sanctification consecration like letting go of sin then there's also the part of like forsaking my desires in the like in the sense that i'm forsaking what i wanted for myself or the kind of future i think i would have wanted for myself the, the career plans i had the whatever plans that that is not according to the will of god or that will not let you fully do the ministry God has committed into your hands. Amen. So that also is part of consecration. But today we are focusing on the sin part. That part of denying yourself, which is denying your flesh. Setting aside all selfish interests. Denying yourself so that you can follow Jesus. Because if you truly want to follow Jesus, you, 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 you nail yourself to the cross every day. I don't mean like you are crucified to your hunger. But you knew your desires, you, 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 you continually kill your flesh. You continually kill your flesh, forsaking your desires. Now let me like give you a short story, no, not like a story, but let me just tell you something. Something like, when I, when I first like de dedicated my life to Christ, like, the way God did it for me was that most of the things I was struggling with then, like, he just, he, like, I, I felt the, he just, he just, he just, he just lifted it off, like, he just removed it. Basically, he just removed it. All the things I was struggling with, I didn't see them again. Like, as the salvation came, like, the deliverance came with it. Basically. But, but, after some time, I noticed that something that I was doing just, it just, it just, it just came up again. It just came up again. Like, all of a sudden, I was like, wow. So this one is still here. I thought every, every, everybody has packed their bag and they have gone. <laughs> They get that kind of thing. So like this one was still here. So I was like, ah, let me, let me talk to God about it. So I, I spoke to God about it. Like anyway, I didn't speak to God about it immediately, Sha. That's where I'm getting to. So like it's, it's continued for a while. Then ah, it now became big. It became big. 
it became big. Then I now told God about it. Then I spoke to God about it. And God said, like I said, if I didn't speak to God about it immediately, I was still enjoying myself for a while. Then God now spoke to me. Like he spoke back to me and he said, I asked him, God, why, why is this here? Like bigger than it came. I'll be bigger than it's left. Like, why is it here bigger than before? And he said, it's because you still like it. I was like, wow. <laughs> it's because you still like it. So what am I trying to pull out from this story? Anyway, cut the long story short. God has, God has delivered me. But what am I trying to pull, to pull out of this story now? Is that the reason why you are still struggling with some things is basically because you still like it. That's why. You still like it. You have not come to the point where you are tired of that thing that you are doing. You have not come to the point where you completely detest it, abhor it, and want to be free. That's why you are still in bondage. If you want to be free and you come to God, you will be free. But you are still there using one tactic, child, trying to child, let's, let's manage the situation. Let's not escalate. Let's let let some let's, um, let's be spiritual leader not know about it. Let's all not see or something like that. If you are still pampering, you trust me to stay. If you still like it, it will be there. It's still there because you still like it. Whether you admit it or not, I'm telling you, a part of you still likes it. Because you have not come to that point where you have you have like Killed the flesh, killed your desires, killed your desires. You have not come to that point where you have killed your desires. You have not forsaken all. You have not forsaken all. So in my process of being free from that thing, God was like, forsake it, forsake it. Like, leave it alone, leave it alone. Stop enjoying it, forsake it, forsake it, forsake it. That's what he kept telling me, forsake it. The reason why it's still there, you have not forsaken it. And it's not just about, oh, I will leave it alone. I will not do it again. I promise. I swear, self, I will not do it again. <laughs> have you not done that before? Did you not still do it again? It's not just about that. Like, from your heart, you must truly decide and, determine, and be determined that I'm leaving this thing alone and I'm not going back to get it. There's some element of willpower here. Although it's not your willpower that's going to deliver you from sin, it's the power of God. Amen. Because people have been practicing willpower for years. Willpower has not got to them anywhere. But willpower in the sense that if you don't want to be free, you will not be free. If, if, even if God wants to deliver you and there's no, there's no sense of, not just repentance, but there's no sense of this thing in you, you will not be free. You will not be free. So a very short message today. Forsake it. Forsake it. Now, how exactly do I forsake this thing? How exactly do I ensure that this flesh and this desire is, is nailed to the cross, is killed completely, to, so that it does not rise up again? Like I said for myself, it, it, all of a sudden, it just came up bigger than when it was before. <laughs> bigger than how it was before, I mean. So how do I get to that point where like, I completely forsake it? Where I completely forsake this thing? Like, I completely, where I actually, truly like, start to detest it and abhor it. Because like I said before, if you don't detest it, if you don't abhor it, if you don't completely hate it, like, you must hate that, you must hate that part of your life. Like, you must hate it. It must vex you. If, you, if it doesn't, you are not ready to be free. So, like, how do I forsake it? How do I come out of this, basically? There are two ways. There are two ways. There's a the physical method and there's a the spiritual method. And I mean, I'm talking to ministers. You all already know the physical, the physical ways. I mean, it's not today you're going to hear for the first time. Free sexual immorality is not today. You already know these things. So now the spiritual way is so, it's very, it's something very simple. Guess what it is? It is prayer. It is what? It is prayer. And what type of prayer? The prayer of consecration. The prayer of consecration. It is the what? The prayer of consecration. Now. All the physical methods being in place, free sexual immorality, throw away your phone so you don't, so you don't view pornography, <laughs> things like that. All those things, every, all of that part being in place, then you come to the place of prayer and burn all these other things on the altar of consecration. You'll be free. The prayer of consecration, if you burn these things, bring it to God on the altar of consecration, you'll be free. You'll truly forsake it. Like, you will truly, you just get to a point where like, 
this th- those things you used to do before, like I don't fancy them again. Like what's the club? What are they doing there? That girl, what 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 does she have to offer me? You just get to that point. And how do you get to that point? By the prayer of consecration. You bring it and ask God to burn it on the altar of consecration. On the altar of consecration. Now remember the first thing I talked about as well. I talked about okay, some people like I know what talk, I'm talking to ministers. Some people here yeah, is not it's not even sin that is doing them. It's like they want to fully follow the will of God, but like ah the things of this world, the things of this world. They still desire to like not things of the world as by sin, but like money. In the sense that oh they still want to chase a career when God is telling them full time, full time, full time ministry. They still want to chase a career, they still want to make money, they still want to do business, they still want to have one side hustle by the side like that. If you want to get rid of that too, it's the same method. The prayer of consecration. Here's what consecration does for you. It helps you subject your will to the will of God. Like it's not like I'm going to live in denial that ah, we know some people pray this prayer, God, take away my will, take away my emotions. Take away my mind. God is not going to take away your mind, okay? He's not going to take away your will. He's not going to take away your emotions. I've not heard that part before. That, that, I just said that now. This was, this was my first time I was saying it. Like, he's not going to take away your emotions. He's not going to take away your will. He's not going to take away your mind. Because I've, I've heard that one. God, take away my mind. Let me not even think again. Just do. No. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. That's why you must pray and get to the point where your will and your desires and your mind is actually truly in tune with the will of God. That's the only way you can move forward, basically. That's the only way you can, your will can be completely subjected to the will of God. That's the only way you can truly want what God wants and know what you want. It's consecration. It's the prayer of consecration. You bring it and you burn it at the altar of consecration. That's the only way. So whether it's sin you are struggling with, whether it's that struggle to completely follow God, it's still forsaken. Because the desires you are still going to forsake, the career, all is destroyed by consecration. Whether it is sin, whether it is fully following God, to forsake those desires, you bring it to the altar of God. Altar of consecration. And let God take it away. Let his desires become your desires. Let his will become your will. It's not that you are going to live in denial. Anything go, shall go. They shall go. See, people that talk like that, truly, truly, they don't want. They don't want. They, 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 they are not, they're not fully submitted. That, you, don't, you don't talk like that. Anything shall that, That's not how to do it, okay? Don't, don't come with that disposition. It's not a good one. You, 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 you come to the point where truly, I want what God wants for me. And I'm not saying it casually before saying sick. Truly, I desire what God desires for me. And I'm not saying because oh, that's what everybody says. Forsake it. Forsake it on the altar of consecration. Remember Jesus when he was about to be betrayed, about to be killed and crucified. He prayed, let this cup pass over me. But not my will, but your will. You need to get to that point. You need to get to that point. You can see he said that passionately. No, ah, whatever will be, will be. Ah, I can't if I no, no, speak the Bible, I don't know. <laughs> he did not say it like, ah, anything, anything shall happen. No. God, let, let my will be subject to your will. So I pray that tonight you actually go to God and like, Get to that altar of consecration and just leave everything there and don't pick it up again. Don't be influenced by what people say. Don't be influenced by what other people are doing. There's a call of God upon your life that you need to fulfill. Okay? Get rid of sin. Get rid of that struggle. Should I follow all the way? Oh, ah, let me just do this thing more. Let me just do other things. So everything is going to be taken care of on the altar of consecration. So I hope you actually pray and actually leave these things at the altar and fully focus on God. And I see God helping us in Jesus' name.